So let me tell you, first of all, um, the day I got the call from, from Joe Biden, it was actually a Zoom call, um, asking me to serve with him on this ticket was probably one of the most memorable, day, memorable days of my life. Um, I, you know, I thought about my mother, who came to the United States at the age of 19, um, gave birth to me at the age of 25 at Kaiser Hospital in Oakland, California. And um, the thought that I'd be sitting here right now, um, I know would make her proud, and she must be looking down on this. Um, you know, Joe and I were raised in a very similar way. We were raised with values that are about hard work, about the value and the dignity of public service, and about the importance of fighting for the dignity of all people. And I think Joe asked me to serve with him because, you know, I have a career that included being elected the first woman district attorney of San Francisco, where I created models of innovation for, for law enforcement in terms of reform of the criminal justice system. I was elected um, the first uh, woman of color and black woman to be elected attorney general of the state of California, where I ran the second largest department of justice in the United States second only to the United States Department of Justice. And there I took on everything from transnational criminal organizations to the big banks that were taking advantage of homeowners to for-profit colleges that were taking advantage of veterans. And then, of course, now I serve in the United States Senate as only the second black woman ever elected to the United States Senate. I serve on the Senate Intelligence Committee where I've been in regular receipt of classified information about threats to our nation and hotspots around the world. I've traveled the world. I've met with our soldiers in, our, in war zones. And I think Joe has asked me to serve with him because he knows that we share, we share a purpose which is about lifting up the American people. And after the four years that we have seen of Donald Trump unifying our country around our common values and principles. Thank you, Senator. But I think this is supposed to be a debate based on fact and truth. And the truth and the fact is Joe Biden has been very clear he will not raise taxes on anybody who makes less than four hundred thousand dollars a year. He said he's going to repeal the Trump tax cuts. Uh, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. Well, wait, wait. I'm speaking. It'd be important if you said the truth. Right. Joe Biden has said <laughs> twice in the debate last week that he's going to repeal the Trump tax cuts. That was tax cuts that gave the average working family two thousand dollars in a tax break every single year. That Senator, is, that is that's absolutely the not true. That is he only bill, cutting? Is he only going to repeal part of the Trump tax cuts? If you don't mind letting me finish, we can Please. then have a conversation. OK? Please. OK. Joe Biden will not raise taxes on anyone who makes less than four hundred thousand dollars a year. He has been very clear about that. Joe Biden will not end fracking. He has been very clear about that. <laughs> Senator Harris, we've seen changes in the, in the role of the United States in terms of global leadership over the past four years. And of course, times do change. What's your definition? We've seen strains with China, of course, as the vice president mentioned. We've seen strains with our traditional allies yeah. in NATO and elsewhere. What is your definition of the role of American leadership in 2020? So... You know, Joe is, I, I love talking with Joe about a lot of these issues. And, you know, Joe, he, I think he said it quite well. He says, you know, foreign policy, it might sound complicated, but really it's relationships. So just think about it as relationships. And so we know this in our personal and professional relationships. Um, you got to keep your word to your friends. You got to be loyal to your friends. People who have stood with you, you got to stand with them. You got to know who your adversaries are and keep them in check. But what we have seen with Donald Trump is that he has betrayed our friends and, 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 and embraced dictators around the world. Let's take, for example, Russia. So Russia, I serve on the Intelligence Committee of the United States Senate. America's intelligence community told us Russia interfered in the election of the president of the United States in 2016 and is playing in 2020. Christopher Wray, the director of the FBI, said the same. But Donald Trump, the commander-in-chief of the United States of America, prefers to take the word of Vladimir Putin over the word of the American intelligence community. You look at our friends at NATO. He has walked away from agreements. You can talk, look at the Iran nuclear deal, which now has put us in a position where we are less safe because they are building up what might end up being a significant nuclear arsenal. 
We were in that deal, guys. We were in the Iran nuclear deal with friends, with allies around the country. And because of Donald Trump's unilateral approach to foreign policy, coupled with his isolationism, he pulled us out and has made America less safe. So Susan, it's about relationships. And the thing that has always been part of the strength of our nation, in addition to our great military, has been that we keep our word. But Donald Trump doesn't understand that because he doesn't understand what it means to be honest. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, Senator Harris. Vice President Pence, let me give you a chance to respond. Well, thank you. Um, well, President Trump kept his word when we moved the American Embassy to Jerusalem, the capital of the State of Israel. When Joe Biden was Vice President, they promised to do that and they never did. We've stood strong with our allies, but we've been demanding. NATO is now contributing more to our common defense than ever before, thanks to President Trump's leadership. We've strengthened our alliances across the Asia Pacific, and we've stood strong uh, against those who would do us harm. You know, when President Trump came into office, uh, ISIS had captured an area of the Middle East the size of Pennsylvania. But President Trump unleashed the American military, and our armed forces destroyed the ISIS caliphate and took down their leader, al-Baghdadi, without one American casualty. Al-Baghdadi was uh, responsible uh, for the death of thousands. Um, but notably, America's hearts today are with the family of Kayla Mueller, her parents of which are here with us tonight in Salt Lake City. Today, two of the ISIS killers responsible for Kayla Mueller's murder were brought to justice in the United States. Jihadi John was killed on the battlefield along with the other beetle. The reality is that when Joe Biden was vice president, we had an opportunity to save Kayla Miller. It breaks my heart to reflect on it, but the military came into the Oval Office, presented a plan. They said they knew where Kayla was. Baghdadi had held her for 18 months, abused her mercilessly before they killed her. But when Joe Biden was vice president, they hesitated for a month. And when armed forces finally went in, it was clear she'd been moved two days earlier. And her family says with a heart that broke the heart of every American that if President Donald Trump had been president, they believe Kayla would be alive today. Thank you, Vice Look, President. Look, we destroyed the ISIS caliphate. Uh, and you talk about re-entering the Iran nuclear deal. I mean, the last administration transferred $1.8 billion to the leading state sponsor Thank you, Vice of President terrorism. Pence. President Donald Trump got us out of the deal. Thank you, Vice President Pence. And, and when Qasem Soleimani was traveling to Baghdad Thank you, to Vice harm President to Pence. Americans, President Donald Trump took Thank you Vice out. President Pence. And America is, is safer. Our allies are safer. And the American people know <laughs> President Donald Trump will never have Thank you, Vice President to take Pence. action. I, I would like to give I'd Senator heard. Harris a, a chance to respond, but Thank not you. at such great length, because, of course, there are other topics we want to talk about. But I would like equal time. Yes. Please. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, first of all, to the Mueller family, I, I, I know about your daughter's case, and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, what happened to her is awful, and it should have never happened. And I know Joe feels the same way. And I know that President Obama feels the same way. Um, but you mentioned Soleimani. Let's, let's start there. So after the strike on Soleimani, there was a counter strike on our troops in Iraq. And they suffered serious brain injuries. And do you know what Donald Trump dismissed them as? Headaches. And this is about a pattern of Donald Trump's, where he has referred to our men who are serving in our military as suckers and losers. Donald Trump, who went to Arlington Cemetery and stood above the graves of our fallen heroes and said, What's in it for them? Because, of course, you know, he only thinks about what's in it for him. Let's take what he said about John McCain, a great American hero. And, and, and Donald Trump says he doesn't deserve to be called a hero because he was a prisoner of war. Take, and this is, this is very important, when you want to talk about who is the current commander in chief and what they care about and what they don't care about. Public reporting 
that Russia had bounties on the heads of American soldiers. And you know what a bounty is? It's somebody puts a price on your head and they will pay it if you are killed. And Donald Trump had talked at least six times to Vladimir Putin and never brought up the subject. Joe Biden would never do that. Thank Joe you. Biden would, but, but Joe Biden yeah. would hold Russia to account for any threat to our nation's security or to our troops who are sacrificing their lives for the sake of our democracy and our safety. Thank you, Senator Harris. In March, Breonna Taylor, a 26-year-old emergency room technician in Louisville, was shot and killed after police officers executing a search warrant in a narcotics investigation broke into her apartment. The police said they identified themselves. Taylor's boyfriend said he didn't hear them do that. He used a gun registered to him to fire a shot, which wounded an officer. The officers then fired more than 20 rounds into the apartment. They say they were acting in self-defense. None of them have been indicted in connection with her death. Senator Harris, in the case of Breonna Taylor, was justice done? You have two minutes. I don't believe so, and I've, I've talked with Brianna's mother, Tamika Palmer, and her family, and her family deserves justice. She was a beautiful young woman. She had as her life goal to become a nurse, and she wanted to become an EMT to first learn what's going on out on the street so she could then become a nurse and save lives. And her life was taken unjustifiably and tragically and violently. And it just, it, it brings me to, you know, the eight minutes and 46 seconds that America witnessed, during which an American man was tortured and killed under the knee of an armed, uniformed police officer. And people around our country, of every race, of every age, of every gender, perfect strangers to each other, marched shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm, fighting for us to finally achieve that ideal of equal justice under law. And I was a part of those peaceful protests. And I believe strongly that, first of all, we are never going to condone violence, but we always must fight for the values that we hold dear, including the fight to achieve our ideals. And that's why Joe Biden and I have said on this subject, look, and I'm a, I'm a former career prosecutor. I know what I'm talking about. Bad cops are bad for good cops. We need reform of our policing in America and our criminal justice system, which is why Joe and I will immediately ban chokeholds and carotid holes. George Floyd would be alive today if we did that. We will require a national registry for police officers who break the law. We will, on the issue of criminal justice reform, get rid of private prisons and cash bail, and Thank we you. will decriminalize marijuana, and we, you, will, we will expunge the records of those who have Thank been you, convicted Harris. of marijuana. This is Thank the you, time Senator for Harris. leadership on a tragic, tragic issue Senator Harris, of your unarmed time is black up. people in America. Who Thank you, Senator killed. Harris. Vice President Pence, let me pose the same question to you. In the case of Breonna Taylor, was justice done? You have two minutes uninterrupted. Well, our heart breaks for the loss of any, any innocent American life. And the family of Brianna Taylor has our sympathies. But I, I trust our justice system, a grand jury that refused the evidence. And it really is remarkable that as a former prosecutor, you would assume that an impaneled grand jury looking at all the evidence got it wrong. But uh, you're entitled to your opinion, Senator. I think... And with regard to George Floyd, there, there's no excuse for what happened to George Floyd. And justice will be served. But there's also no excuse for the rioting and looting that follow. I mean, it, it really is astonishing. Flora Westbrook is with us here tonight in Salt Lake City. Just a few weeks ago, I stood at what used to be uh, her salon. It was burned to the ground by rioters and looters. And, and Flora is still trying to put her life back together. And I must tell you, this, this, this presumption that you hear consistently uh, from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, 
that, uh, that America is systemically racist. Mm -hmm. And that, as Joe Biden said, that he believes that law enforcement has an implicit bias against minorities is, is a great insult to the men and women who serve in law enforcement. And I want everyone to know who puts on the uniform of law enforcement every day that President Trump and I stand with you. And it is remarkable that, that when Senator Tim Scott tried to pass a police reform bill, brought together a group of Republicans and Democrats, Senator Harris, you got up and walked out of the room. And then you filibustered Senator uh, Tim Scott's bill on the Senate floor that would have provided new accountability, new repeat resources. Look, we don't have to choose between supporting law enforcement, proving public safety, and supporting our African-American neighbors you, and President. all of our minorities. Under President Trump's leadership, you, we will President always Pence. stand with law enforcement and we'll do what we've done Vice from President day one Pence, and that is improve is the up. lives of African Americans. Thank you, Vice Record President. Record unemployment, Pence. record Vice investments President in Pence, education, and up. we'll fight for school choice for all of our members. Thank you, Vice President. I'd like to respond. Senator Harris. I will not sit here and be lectured by the Vice President on what it means to enforce the laws of our country. I am the only one on this stage who was personally prosecuted everything from child sexual assault to homicide. I'm the only one on this stage who has prosecuted the big banks for taking advantage of America's homeowners. I'm the only one on this stage who prosecuted for profit colleges for taking advantage of our veterans. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. We wanna to thank also the University of Utah for its hospitality, and most of all, our thanks to all the Americans who watched this debate tonight.